Well, I appreciate y'all hanging tight. I know we're all busy here buying, um, but if y'all want to hang around for the Q and A, um, feel free to do so. If you want to head out and go shop, feel free to do that too. But anybody got any questions uh, after watching that? Is yeah. There any size, a discernible size difference between East Coast and West Coast? Purple Martins. Martins. Not to uh, my knowledge or anyone from PMCA either. Yeah. Anybody else? So we always have people who say that well, I put up the Martin House and the five years haven't gotten anything. Yeah. Um, we, <laughs> Me too. <laughs> and so I've heard that just moving it 15 or 20 foot can help. Is that? It can. Uh, I mean, yeah. Um, yeah, so with Martin Houses, you want to be at least 30 to 40 feet from trees and structures. But I think a lot of people struggle getting martins because they put a house up in an area that doesn't have a very healthy martin population. And like it took me five years to get my first martin pair. Um, and uh, the way I ultimately did that was, I don't know if uh, it's a Goldcrest product, but the Songbird magnet that they sell here. Um, I, as soon as I put that up, I mean, it was just martins within a week. So, um, and it has like a little, it plays recorded calls and it's programmed by the light of day. So, uh, and all you have to do is just plug it in and yeah. Does anybody else have any other questions? Yeah. It's more, not really a question, it's more of an observation in that, uh, it must be a behavioral thing from areas, but I noticed that most of the nest is made out of, um, leaves or, or pine. Mm hmm Always mud where y'all are. Yes. Yeah. And I have I have put in different things, and first thing they do when they come is kick everything out. Really? <laughs> and they make it with mud. Yeah, with what you know, because I'll get some with mud, you know, but I'll put like um. And where you go? I'm from South Dakota. Okay. I'll get I'll put pine needles even uh -huh. at the start, and then but and they all do in different years. Like this year, I didn't have much mud. Well, we were so dry all year, yes. so we didn't have any mud. But but then they'll say, and I always know when they're going to start laying eggs is when all of a sudden the green leaves appear. Yeah. Yeah, and so, I mean, uh, you didn't see in the uh, movie, but that woman, Heather, her colony, she had a lot of mud nests, too. And some birds had mud dams that were bl almost inhibiting the birds from getting in and out of the uh, their compartments. So. Yes, ma'am. Does it work for Martin houses if you don't have a body of water around it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't have yep. a Yeah. Yes, sir. I want to go around my starling for not being allowed sparrows in the houses that they're big. Ah. The sparrows that big. And they don't know where the... Yeah, that's a big thing. Yeah. I know the sparrows aren't protected. Starlings and sparrows aren't protected by the Migratory Bird Treaty Act. I got so. anti-starling doors on there yeah. now. I took care of that. Yeah. But now I, the sparrows are... Yeah. I was, yeah, I was going to say, you can manage your sparrows and starlings however you wish to. <laughs> so I'm going to say that. <laughs> As we're at a store of a bunch of bird bird feeders. But uh, anybody else? Do you, yeah. do you think the mud makes it cooler in the nest? It could add some insulation to it. I've seen but some people. Being down south, mm -hmm. it might make it cooler. Yeah, some people who've used uh, aluminum, aluminum housing and plastic housing, some kind of get a little bit warmer. Um, other people will put like ice packs in like those big condos to help cool. Um, help cool the houses down and stuff. Uh, some people strap umbrellas to the top of their Martin colonies. In the spring, I always put a heater in mine. Yeah. Because, you know, they come about the 4th of April and it's cold. Yeah. Will they fill a house 100% like the... Like total... I'd say there's a kind of classic cliche response uh, among biologists with questions like that. It depends. Um, <laughs> and I mean, it's all nature's just fickle. So some birds I've seen, they fill up an entire colony. And then once they do that, they'll try and search out other colonies nearby. So, I mean, if you have, let's say you put one up and you get a full lot. And then like, let's say your neighbor sees that and they get jealous they want to put that up or like it, you're a bird shop owner so like let's say you put one up at your store 
um, and they fill up and the neighbors kind of get, uh, get jealous or your customers want to get into that, um, then they'll put Martin housing up and then your birds will kind of source their uh, Martin colonies just based on the birds that grow up in your colony and then disperse outward. So They always say, you know, they like to have an extra room, you know, because when the babies get so big and yeah. stuff. But this year, my one sixteen compartment is the first year. I mean, every single one was full. That's awesome. Yeah, so it was like yeah. 80-some babies on there. That's great. Yes, sir. If we want to show this to one of our nature groups back at home, um, how would we set that up with you? Um, I actually, that's a great question because um, – I sell screening kits, and so if you like want to screen this to like a nature group or to your customers and want to put on an event where you can show this to your clientele, um, I have a spreadsheet here y'all can fill out with just name, contact info, and all that, and we can be in touch and kind of set screenings up that way. So. Do you want to like zoom in at the end? Yeah, zoom be happy to. Hey, we'll go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, and so I mean, I made this film because like these birds are dependent on man-made houses so like we put them in this fickle situation and we're all bird uh, birdhouse retailers basically and um for me like after this past year after i screened it i ended up selling 10 purple martin racks and it netted me over 10 or it grossed me over ten thousand dollars in revenue to my store and i have mel from hilltop back in the corner to thank for that he's my go-to supplier so if you're interested in like trying to get more purple martin stuff going in your store uh, Hilltop stuff. I recommend Hilltop, not to speak ill of any other uh, Martin retailer. And then the PMCA are great partners as well. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, we just kind of hold this bird's future in our hands to make sure that they stick around. So, does anybody else have any more questions? Or? Are you planning on studying anything else? Studying anything else? Um, I do have a few more film ideas in mind uh, that I want to do. Not entirely bird related. But um, I definitely uh, probably taking a break after doing a big five-year venture with this one. So I got to get the word out. I need you all to help me get the word out. So, but yeah. Anything else? Yeah. There's some experiment. There's some experiments going on in like. Uh, working forests um so forests that are like managed by paper companies and all that as well as like national forests where they're beginning to kind of create stands of snags so and create a lot more woodpecker habitat for woodpeckers to move in create holes and then and do that in areas where there are heavy martin presence um and then we they're doing that in hopes that they'll put a martin colony establish a man-made colony close to the stand of snags, and then as that mar Martin colony fills up, they'll hopefully take to the natural cavities. So, but yeah. Did you have a good time down in Brazil? I had a blast, man. Did you see that carnival? <laughs> so, but yeah. Anything else? Well, thank y'all for hanging tough. I know y'all are all busy and uh, want to get your product. Uh, Go stock up your stores, so I just thank y'all for staying here, learning about Martins, and hopefully we can work together and uh, save the species. So.